Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about Mario Kart Wii on the Nintendo Wii, or pretty much everything wrong with Nintendo during the Wii era in a single game. So let's start off by talking about the premise of the game. You know Mario Kart Double Dash, that fun game? Well, Nintendo's philosophy in the Wii era was to take pretty much whatever and pretty much make casual games. So... During the Wii era, there was no F-Zero, only one Star Fox, which was on the DS and not a main console. And there was, um, sure, there was Metro there were two Metroid games, but those had motion controls tacked on. In fact, every game that did have a release on the Wii had motion controls tacked on. And Mario Kart, I mean, every Nintendo first party game, pretty much, a good majority of them, like, mo pretty much all the ones I've played had them tacked on. But Mario Kart Wii is no exception. The first thing you'll notice is when you look at the box art. I know I shouldn't be nitpicking like this, but look at it. You see two people standing there with Wii remotes. Then you go ahead and take a look at the box arts of, say, the older Mario Karts. And what do you see? Well, you see a box art that pretty much looks like what the game is. People in go-karts racing. Mario Kart Wii, on the other hand... Mario and Luigi standing against a white background holding steering wheels, which, which are actually the Wii wheel that came with many copies of this game. And they gave people this stupid attachment to put your Wii remote in because, as I'll get into, well, the control scheme by default was actually hold the Wii remote sideways and turn it. And that control scheme flat out blows and trust me just like many other Wii games that attempted motion control like this it just doesn't work and you'd be better off playing with the nunchuck the classic controller or if you own an older Wii the GameCube controller because it does work with those at least of course the controls aren't as good as double dash but let's talk about the game shall we so you start the game and you find there are basically a few basic modes Single player, multiplayer with up to four people, there's no system link, so despite the game having 12 player versus bots and online, you can't do system link with another console. Especially unlike Mario Kart Double Dash, which allowed you to do it. The second thing you notice is that the graphics, even in the menus, are visibly downgraded from the GameCube. I mean, the GameCube just had a better look to it. This looks like you took a PS2 game and used one of those PC graphic mods that adds a bunch of bloom to it made by fans. Seriously, that's what it looks like. The game comes with at least a bunch of courses, but in typical Mario Kart tradition, you have to unlock them. Which is kind of bad, especially for a game which you're supposed to play with friends. Why should you have to unlock the courses? I mean, it's like if Call of Duty or Halo or... Quake or Doom or whatever game locked all the maps, or if Madden locked teams unless you beat the game. And I mean, seriously, these graphics, like I said, look meh. But anyways, let's get back. Let's talk about the actual gameplay. The gameplay is pretty much this. Unlike Mario Kart Double Dash or the others, there are now up to 12 players. However, there are some limitations. Not only can you only use four players in this, but because, well, there's no system link functionality, so you can't, say, get several Wiis and link them up. But here's another problem with this game, and I'll point this out right now, as you can see, the rubber banding. This game has two kinds of rubber banding. The first kind is with power-ups. Now, I'm going to mention this a lot. The game pretty much gives you the most power-ups if you're behind. So, if you're in, like, 8th place playing online with all these people who will boost a lot and stuff, then, basically, you'll get lightning bolts, you'll get POWs, you'll get, um, every single power-up you can think of. But in single-player mode, well, the AI cheats. This has the most obvious example of rubber banding AI, which if you don't know, let me explain it real quick. Rubber banding AI... Is, an, is basically AI where you're playing a game and suddenly you're getting good and then the game basically jacks the difficulty way up. But anyways, 
you can see it here because as you'll notice in this race and various other computer races the game just spams you with items i mean i'm not even kidding you'll only get like bananas and maybe a green shell but behind you they'll get everything they'll get mushrooms red shells pows lightning bolts nearly everything in the book and i mentioned you can't even fake paw can't even pause it like you could in double dash where you're seeing the item thing roll down and you can't hit the item use button and it'll stop it you can't even do that anymore but now i've gotten the cheap ai out of the way let me talk about another main flaw with this game the controls they flat out suck there's several control schemes there's the set there's the normal controllers which is basically wiimote nunchuck uh, classic controller on gamecube and then there's the wiimote where you have to tilt i did not record any footage because it's literally unplayable i've tried playing this in the past where they have wii remotes with only the remote itself at people's houses and other times and it is unplayable I wish I was kidding, but you basically turn the Wii Remote around and basically you bounce all over the place. Unlike the analog stick, which gives you greater precision and stuff, it bounces. The course design or the drifting is screwed up in this game too, and unlike Double Dash where it feels easy to do, in this game it feels like they made it, they crippled it or made it hard or something. I mean, Mario Kart DS, which came before this, was kind of alright, it wasn't too bad. This game on the other hand? It's basically, it has it all. It has the rubber banding AI, it's got controls. It feels like the game was watered down from Double Dash. I mean, everything from the graphics to the gameplay itself feels watered down. And, and it just, it's terrible to play. Another problem with the rubber banding AI is it can be widely consistent. One game I was winning by a margin, the next game, well... The game which is blue shelling me to death. And I've heard of pretty much... And pretty much not only that, but... Because of this, the game can be boring to play. Especially when you're playing it with friends. I mean... Let's be honest. This game... Nobody wants to play a game with friends where they get blue shelled all the time. And Mario Kart Wii is no different. This game is just not fun to play at all, especially when there are better Mario Karts. I mean, if you own a backwards compatible Wii, which is a good number of them because they have the GameCube controller ports on them. If you own a backwards compatible Wii, and not like the newer one which was cost reduced or the Wii Mini, you can play this game. If you have a GameCube, I mean, you can play Double Dash, and that's much better. If you have a GameCube, which are dirt cheap nowadays you can play double dash and have more fun with your friends especially if you have a ton of money and buy the system link adapter and two system link adapters two game cubes and two copies of the game you can actually do double dash system link with several consoles and you can actually like have like four player split screen on it on two consoles so you can have eight player double dash games unlike mario kart wii which has no option for system link whatsoever so if you want to play with your friends like and have a bunch of friends coming over you can't do that because you can only have four people at once so let's talk about the multiplayer online i mean first thing you'll notice it's nintendo wi-fi so this is bare bones game spy like i mean the most bare bones online you can get there's friend codes where you have to add where both people have to add each other's code there's um there's no anti-cheat whatsoever it's literally primitive bare bones basic game spy i mean it's as bare bones as it gets so basically there is online for 11 people but unlike xbox live where you have friends lists um messaging gamer tags you can report cheaters you can um send messages through voice there's voice chat too there's pretty much it's pretty much like that there's none of that here but you know online like that 
it doesn't happen. Did I mention there was even a timer just to pick your car even before you get into a game? Yeah, that's all you need to know. Oh, and one more thing I thought I'd mention about Xbox Live that this game doesn't have. Xbox Live bans people for cheating. It has ways to detect if people are cheating. This game has little to no anti-cheat measures. And while there aren't any cheaters in this game, I've seen and heard uh, many reports of people cheating on this game. I mean, you can go on YouTube and you can find videos of people doing it. There's also bikes which drive slightly different than carts. And, well... But basically, in the end... They're nearly the same, and pretty much, well, I, I mean, I played with them once. They aren't really too much special, especially considering how it's still Mario Kart and everything still applies. So you still have the AI, you still have the um, rubber banding, you still have all that stuff. But let's get back to matchmaking. Matchmaking pretty much picks several random people, throws it into a game, and then you're just waiting for their game to finish. Which can be a few minutes depending on what map it is. There was also two player on Wi-Fi so you can have your friend play. But when you do two player on Wi-Fi, here's the thing. It cuts down to 30 FPS and looks even worse than it does right now. Maybe it's system limitations. I don't know. Maybe it's because I really don't know why but it's just not that fun in the end. Especially considering it's Mario Kart and how, well, considering how I don't even remember if Mario Kart Double Dash had to dip down to 30 FPS just to go online. I mean, it didn't have a line, but I mean just to do split screen. So basically, after a ton of waiting, you're eventually thrown into the voting screen. Just to keep in mind, this game came out in 2008 when Call of Duty World at War was out, when Halo 3 had been out for some time. And of course, when map voting was already kind of standard in games. So basically, not only do you have a primitive EXP system which gives you VR points based on how often you win and lose, you get to vote for your track. And what do I mean? Well, you get to pick any course you've unlocked, and you pretty much get to put it in the voting. And then what the game does is it basically randomly picks a course. It doesn't matter if you hate the course or if you like the course, whichever one the game picks is voted. Unlike COD 4 where you could vote to skip, Halo 3 where you could veto, um, or later games such as, no I know I shouldn't be comparing it. So actually, unlike later games like Black Ops 2 where you could pick one or two maps out of the list, Sega games were pretty much the one with the most votes, closest toward the easiest one would win, or pretty much let me use another good example unlike pc shooter games where you could pick any map and the one with the most votes would win this game on the other hand pretty much randomly selects and it can get quite annoying especially if if all the people vote for one map some kid votes for say a map everybody hates like rainbow road and it does the thing and picks rainbow road yeah that can be quite annoying the items are annoying too, such as, well, pretty much the fact that the game rubber bands items for people who are losing. So, say, right now I'm going to get a bunch of mushrooms, like the ones where you can keep using them over and over again, while some people even further behind will get, like, lightnings and, um, and those kind of items. In fact, I'll just cut to another gameplay clip to show you what I mean. Now, here's basically what a luck base game is like. Now, while I'm struggling with the controls and maybe the questionable online support, I found this out. Here's something funny. The game will hand you items if you're literally either in last place or next to it. The game will just hand you out items. Now, I know this was an intention this was not intentional maybe because these terrible controls look me drifting hard. Like in Mario, unlike Mario Kart Double Dash, which was actually a fun game, this game on the other hand is not fun at all. I mean, it's just bland. And look, the guy looked like he was jittering around too because of the lag. And I wouldn't be surprised if this game had poor netcode like Mario Kart 7 did. But anyways, I just use a lightning bolt, boom. I get it because I'm literally in last place. This game just hands you out these power-ups like the free candy. 
And that's the thing, this game is just unbalanced, mostly based on luck, isn't really fun at all, and I mean, if you have friends, what reason is there to get this game? I mean, if you own a Wii that's older, you could get Double Dash. If you own a GameCube, you could get Double Dash. And GameCubes are literally dirt cheap. If you have a bunch of money, you would get several GameCubes, a few broadband adapters, and then play Double Dash. Because all in all, Double Dash is much better than this game, much more fun, much more balanced. And you'll probably have more fun playing Double Dash too with your friends. I mean, this game, it's unbalanced. They literally hand you items, and before you, and, and in case you're going to say I'm bad at this game, let me just point out that I'm actually kind of good at Double Dash. Because Double Dash is actually requires some skill. This game is pure luck. And now for the final verdict. The game is pretty much generic. I mean, it's generic Mario Kart stages based on Mario. The graphics somehow look even worse in many stages. The gameplay, like I said, the controls are terrible. The rubber banding AI is terrible. The music's just same generic Mario Kart stuff. And let's talk about some other features of this game. The online is bare bones, primitive, and of course it's going to get shut down on May 20th, 2014. So 12 player play is going to be impossible because Nintendo did not put system link unless somebody reverse engineers the servers there are people trying to but whether that will actually happen is a great big if and i really can't guarantee that the online is still going to be working say a few months from now because of this so on all this game is just bland forgettable with bad controls and personally my verdict is avoid this game okay just get double dash like I've said so many times in this review already. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.